Select board meeting to order. We'll begin um, with the process of reorganizing the select board now that there's been an election, even though the uh, people who were up for election got uh, easily reelected. And again, congratulations to Selectman Mills and Hooker on their reelection yesterday. Um, this will give everybody a chance to vote for their uh, leadership positions of chair and vice chair. So we'll begin with the position of select board chair. Are there any nominations for this position? I'll nominate Alicia Malay. Is there another vote? Fred. Another supporting? Fred, you want to go together? Okay. <laughs> uh, second. I'm second it. Okay. Seconds. Um, are there any other nominations? Hearing none, I'll ask all those in favor of electing electing Alicia Malay as chair. Please vote aye. Aye. Any opposed? Say nay. That's unanimous. Four to nothing. Congratulations, Alicia Malay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, now, as to the board's uh, vice chair, we'd be happy to take uh, nominations. Are there any nominations for the position of vice chair? I'll nominate Dave Mills. I'll second. Very good. Um, is there any other nomination that anyone would like to make for vice chair? Hearing none. I'll ask that all those in favor of electing Dave Mills as vice chair, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? It's unanimous. Congratulations to the chair and vice chair, Alicia and Dave. The meeting is yours. All right. Thank you. Um, all right. So any need for executive? Not for me, Madam Chair. Anyone else have anything? Oh, that's the first time in a while, huh? Mm, yeah. <laughs> Uh, any need to amend the agenda? I guess we did have a couple add-ons. Um, one, I have an authorization uh, that needs to go to the uh, folks at the village farm authorizing the town manager to assist them with the application process, essentially. And there's also a certificate of highway mileage that the state would like towns to fill out, even though there's been no changes in Pittsburgh this year. Okay, great. I move we adopt the agenda as amended. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, so appointment of recording clerk Linda Drummond. Yes. Motion we appoint Linda Drummond recording clerk. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Appointment of official newspaper, the reporter. So move. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, adoption of the select board meeting schedule. Make a motion, we approve it. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Come on, Joe. You're you to say something. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sounds good to me. All right. We got a lot more of that to go. Yeah. <laughs> sure in the past, we we, do we've things. adopted these listings. Oh, and mass. mass That'd uh, be great. But, uh, feel free to do that if you like. Yeah. I wish we point out those that are listed here on the sheet. All right. I'll second that. Okay. And most of those, are, of course, are reappointments mm -hmm. in terms. Okay. So one question. Do we need another fence viewer? Um, we do. It's we been should. open for a long time. And, well, no, but I didn't know Jack if. Oh, is he interested? Probably ought to find somebody because Jack may not be able to. That's. He's not Jack Fox. Oh. Uh, so Frank Bovey was the third one, and it's been a good while, and he's been, been gone. gone. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Apparently, not too many people are eager to get into that. <laughs> The good news is oh, uh, we don't have much use of them, but when we yes. do, it's good to have them. Well, I think that's just a regulation, isn't it? It's I can solicit some interest uh, in the yeah. newsletter, et cetera, for more people. Yeah, but we you can certainly that. work with those two for now, and we can always replace Jack Fox if we find enough candidates. Well, I mean, I'd, I guess for what little work it is, I'd be willing to, oh, if good. that's allowed. Oh, I think so. I don't I think there's any good. prohibition on it. Well, so just write well, you in on, on the vacancy? Well, I, oh. Or I'll take out the part of my motion that we appoint uh, Dave Mills as the fence viewer. Okay. Fantastic. I will let you know if there's any prohibition on a selectman doing it, but I, I don't think it would be. Oh, well, then I guess the other one, I wouldn't mind um, being uh, the those? alternate for the Rutland transportation because we just need uh, someone there as well. Fantastic. Make that part of my motion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
still less onerous than to do these one by one. I'll let you know when yeah. those ne- meetings come up because I'd be happy to even go with you one night together and get you introduced to everybody. All right, I know. I, th- I went. Well, I think we all didn't. We all weren't. We all invited to the um, uh, outdoor airport. Or, yes, that's yes. true. That's we true. Went so, airport. That's yeah. true. It's the one and only time I was at one of those meetings. But yeah, yeah. that's great. John, they, they used to have a position of surveyor wooden timber. That's right. Is that still in there? Or no, that no. disappeared. And there also used to be a, a weigher of coal. Yeah. Really? Oh, is that right? Uh, <laughs> any number of outdated offices like Grand Jura recently yeah. was banned. And, yeah. uh, so they've eliminated some of they that. Have. They have. Probably just as well. Yep. All right, so subject to those two changes, yep. you can feel free to just need a motion. second on the motion. Second. Sorry. Nope. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Look at that. First page done. Okay. Um, any changes or corrections to select board minutes of February 17th? I didn't see that. There's also liquor board minutes. All right. We have all this stuff, so I didn't. <laughs> no, it's it makes more sense. We yeah. talked about that yeah, it makes one of their most recent well, meetings. It kind of makes more sense to have yeah. it start over at you anyway. I should just make sure I look at it, though, you know, when I come in. And it'll always be here, and you can do that when you come in, maybe. Yeah, okay, that sounds now. good, yeah. in two places, Joe. Hank, he's not feeling good or no. He's getting better, but he just wasn't quite up for his night. (laughs) (laughs) I see Jack Fox out around the Barnyard there. Okay. But I don't. He's. I think it's kind of been a little harder on him than he thought. No, he's no spring chicken. No, he had open heart surgery. Yeah. Eesh. Any questions on the orders? I see the depot hill there, Casella, that's 17,000. 176. Or 17, that must be on the salt shed. Uh, that's on actually on the depot hill sewer. sewer. On that part, I know it's one or the other, right? That's right. Yeah, I kind of figured that. On these other, this, are we talking about these orders here as well? Yes. Do you have any uh, questions on those? Almost down at the bottom there is... Uh, Oh, 4,396, I don't know, it's A-N-N-N, I'm not sure just what that all amounts to. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure, Joe, but I do know that the listers have approved it. It's an annual payment to help them monitor the grand list. So I imagine it's some kind of a a computer software package and or mapping. I just don't know which of the two. uh, Vision software, right, that they use for doing it? It says vision, so I assume that's what it was. I just didn't. Recognize it as something I know about. That's why I asked. I don't know. Yeah, you're right. And I see the police have got another five hundred and sixteen dollars for ammo. Must be they're doing a lot of target practicing. I think that was part of the order that just came in late. Yeah. I had a couple boxes for um, the police department on that about ten days ago, but uh, I did see in the um, in the records that uh, there was that reimbursement from. The officers for their, their individual you, you add this to the last one yeah. and it makes quite a bit of money yeah, and well, there's eight or nine thousand the right. one that's underlined is what they put back in so that's, they put that back that back in oh that's good i mean I, yeah so that it right. makes it a lot smaller okay 
Any other no. questions on orders? No. I'll circulate them in a batch, including payroll. Alicia, I imagine you'll want to get to Mr. Norris. Yeah, that was planning on it. <laughs> Gotta split these up. It's gonna be easier, I guess. Well, on shelf. One of them. Them, well, I'm putting them as fast as I can. <laughs> At least they don't have to go back and forth. They're all going in one direction. That's a good thing. Yeah, it makes it a little less confusing. <laughs> In the end, oh, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Notice in today's Herald, there was a lot of towns there, election result, but Pittsburgh wasn't in there. I know, we talked yeah, about that yeah, earlier. <clears throat> Helen explained to me that Liz sent it to somebody at the, at the Herald, but misspelled her name in the, in, in the email. Oh. It didn't get there. Time for that. And there may be other towns that are missing too. I mean, yeah. All right, town manager's report. Yes. Uh, um, the contractor's subcontractor on the salt shed project has now erected all of the steel roof structure. We had a bit of a delay in the parts. The fabric cover has been about two thirds installed and that will be hopefully finished as soon as they have a good uh, day with no wind. Could be as early as tomorrow, I imagine. Um, as to the Depot Hill pump station project, um, Casella has completed work on the replacement of the two Depot Hill pump stations. All that will remain is um, some cleanup seating <coughs> matching in better weather days. Uh, as I mentioned, the Middlebury Fence uh, Company has put the new fence up at the wreck, and we have a few punch list items, and they're expected to be back to um, straighten out the first two fences, which are not absolutely straight, and also to put a couple caps on posts that were missing, as well as some restoration of the site. Uh, I did attend by Zoom that public hearing in Chittenden, on February 22nd to confirm that, yes, in fact, all they were talking about is some minor adjustments to the location of Bisbee and Lead Mine Roads up there. No impact at all on the West Creek, on the West Road extension, excuse me, which is the access road we've always used to get up to our water sources on Mount McWack itself. No, no, nothing to worry about, uh, at least for now, uh, in the town of Chittenden. Stephanie Burke of the Regional Planning Commission has forwarded the um, current and final draft of the um, local hazard mitigation plan to the state. And I'll let you know when we have word from them as to how it was received. Um, the <laughs> highway foreman reports that he's been told by Kenworth to expect that the new cab and chassis will be ready for transfer over to Viking status. And that was to be sometime <coughs> Um, I tried to get an update from Chad uh, this morning. He said he had a call into Kenworth, but again, that was the last report. And if so, we can get the body to Viking Civis 
um, <laughs> they can begin work on it uh, sometime in March, as soon as they get it. Either they had a slot on March 8th or, or the um, three weeks later, uh, and it'll depend on when we can get it to them. Uh, there's apparently you know, a sub substantial period of time to install the body thereafter. Um, we learned some of us during and some of us just after our budget information hearing that a broken tree limb damaged our pickup police cruiser, both its cab roof and windshield uh, during that windstorm on Monday night. <clears throat> Thankfully, nobody was seriously hurt, although Officer Goulet says he had his bell rung. <laughs> shaken up. Uh, the cruiser has been hauled up for repairs uh, at Middlebury Dodge, and the Brandon Police Department has been good enough to offer us a loaner for the several weeks it might take to get those repairs done. Um, the Regional Planning Commission, which is our consultant for the sidewalk scoping study, has generated a good request for proposals and seeking a consultant that'll handle the project. And um, the, um, the um, project will soon go out to request proposals. And then um, the committee that we've set up con consisting of myself, uh, Alicia, highway foreman, and then uh, the Regional Planning Commission representative, uh, Devin and his assistant, Eric Hall, uh, will be interviewing candidates and then we'll report back to the full board with a recommendation about that. Um, OMIA's legal counsel has provided a purchase and sale agreement for us to look over regarding the town's desire to purchase a small parcel of OMIA land on West Creek Road near the intersection with the Kendall Hill Road. Um, and that's all about the town's uh, longstanding desire to relocate our Florence fire substation. Uh, I will ask Attorney Cuffer to look it over. It looks for like a fairly straightforward document, and we can discuss uh, his input and the document itself at the next meeting on March 17th, if that's agreeable. Yep. Um, Depot Hill covered bridge repairs. The highway foreman will attend the next select board meeting to discuss options for the deck repair work to be done. He's done some research about other covered bridges and other ones in town and others from out of town as to how best to tackle that uh, project with runners. Um, obviously, there'll be a needed detour, so we won't want that project to conflict with the next project I'm going to mention, which is the Kendall Hill Road <coughs> uh, deck repairs. Daniels Construction, I've been in touch with them. They plan to perform their deck repairs on the Kendall Hill Bridge uh, in either two to four weeks, depending on how extensive the damage is uh, in the May and June timeframe. So that's it for me. Any questions for John? And I just noticed it's not on the agenda, but this is usually where we do select board member oh, right. marks. Anyone have anything? No? Okay. Any public comment? Butch, you're our only public. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm just an interest. Interested observer, I noted that you're going to sign off on a lot of the uh, required uh, 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 standards and network uh, to, so you could get higher grant percentages. So I was kind of interested in watching that. Tonight. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All, right. <clears throat> All right. So we'll skip old business. We can go to uh, remarks from Deer Lane Solar Project Developer Mike Norris. Good evening. Good evening. It's all yours. Oh, thank you. They have um, they have your submission in their packets. Right? Okay, good. Thank, thank you. Um, so in in your packets, you'll see a uh, uh, site plan that um, I've been working with uh, Carpenter and Costin on for a net metered solar array uh, down on Deer Lane, which is folks know is the old P and T Terranovich and Terranovich tractor uh, shop. And uh, this is actually a, um, an amendment to, uh, or an addition to a smaller project that we did last year. It was under 15 kW or effectively 60 panels. And, um, and uh, we got that online before uh, the end of last year. And um, it's uh, their desire and we're 
permitting forum. I'm Ann and LLC, which is uh, Amanda and Mike. I'm, uh, the Mike part, and uh, Amanda Moore is my wife. Um, so what we're uh, presenting is, uh, to the board is the addition of another 35 kW. So if you look on your site plan, uh, you'll see uh, some second areas which represent the existing tables of the world and the group of tables. And then the other four and a half uh, tables of the group of that represent the new, uh, new addition. Totaling of uh, 50 KW AC and 5 KW DC, which will provide enough power to, you know, on an annual basis. And the power for uh, further needs at the moment. Last week I presented this to the uh, Planning Commission. Uh, it's been uh, about four years since I've been in front of you, uh, as in 2016, uh, permitted and installed with your support the uh, 500 kW. Uh, Ray, that's on um, Mark Wilbur's land of Winslow. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we'd be, um, yeah, I, I, I love a letter of support uh, from you folks, or at the very least, uh, a lack of an objection. Mm -hmm. But uh, being a runner, I like to put it out in front of everybody and, and uh, work with everybody that I can, formally and informally. So a quick question sure. uh, in terms of how much larger the project will get as a result of this additional work yeah. you've got 50 panels now how many more do you have in mind so it's going to be um, there'll be a total of uh, two of them now 60 uh, 60 panels so that's 15 so there's going to be um, About 120 panels, if you will. So you're almost doubling the size, or uh, more, more than doubling? More, more, yeah. more, more than doubling the size, yeah. So it'd be 120. Oh, and let me uh, just finish my math if I could, but 120 would be 30. So it would be um, more, than, more than doubling it, approximately 108, no more than uh, 180 panels. So new panels or total? The total would be 180. Got it. The existing is 60. So there's 60 existing now in yeah. the in the two arrays. Yeah. Okay. So in one, two tables, and when I say tables, it it's uh, being a new science, so to speak. A panel is two and a half feet wide by four and a half feet high. Right. A table is those stanchions of panels, if you will. Right. Where you'll have four four I beams pounded into the ground. So those are generally referred to as tables. And then the arrays are sort of the whole project, if you will. Right. So um, right now if you drive by there, there's two two tables. Um, Which are a total of 60 panels. Yep, 60 panels. And you're adding one, two, three, looks like four and a half more tables. That's correct. But so they aren't going to be quite as because if you got so thirty, so that's okay. So that's one hundred and twenty, one hundred and fifty. You're adding. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So that, okay. Yeah. And one of them smaller, by the way. But right. It so looks like about a half, <coughs> half to two thirds. Yeah. So and then and most of it's just going to be in front of the other one, with about thirty feet in between. Okay. So, yeah. These are set back as far as you know, far from the road as we can reasonably do and have it still be productive. And uh, it's set at equal distance, you know, spacing it as far as we can away from any other adjoining property or building. So we, we have some very healthy setbacks. I was gonna say, how, how, do you, how would you describe the visual uh, impact of what you've got now versus what you have in mind? Well, um, very little, just because right now there's two panels, and if you were uh, approaching at normal speeds on Route 3, 
you, you'd have to look over very quick, quickly if you're coming from, from the west. If you're coming from the east, you'd have to even look more quickly in order to see it because the only thing you're going to see if you're perpendicular to it is a cross section of the panels themselves, mm -hmm. which is not a lot to see, especially with the backdrop of fairly industrial building. Um, coming from the west, heading east, um, there's two very robust hardwood trees that are right along the driveway, the TNT tractor on Deer Lane, that are going to obstruct the view of those panels, and those are the shiny sides of the panels. So um, reasonably, the only way you're going to see them is, uh, what does my wife like to say? It'd be hard to see them at the speed of a galloping horse. <laughs> um, so... Uh, they, they go a little faster on Route 3. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, well, but we lower the speed limit. Yeah, I just, <laughs> just cut the speed limit down there. Well, I've got to admit, I mean, I knew there were solar panels there. Yeah. And until I looked at this, I always thought they were out behind the building. Yeah. I, again, your focus is mm -hmm. what's ahead of you. You don't really, and if you look over there, you see that salt shed thing they've got that that sticks out the most. Yeah, I've never seen these solar panels. Yeah, been I there know for about you know four five months, four months. Okay, yeah. So I mean, um, so and then the addition to them is going to be right in front of it. Right. So um, you know, just south of it. So again, you, from the road. And that clear, you know, the clearing right around the uh, deer lane there, the giant lawn, you know, that's where it opens up and you're able to see it on the road. You're basically going to see the cross section of it. Right. And from the west side, you're going to see trees first. If you're coming east to west, you're going to see the back side of it, but there's a, there's a split rail fence, you know, uh, on the, um, on the east side of that. That's the neighbor. I have a question. Yeah. Could some sort of a shrub be put on the ends to obstruct even seeing it that way? Well, you know, we talked about that, but that's not going to, it's not going to obstruct anything because it's only going to be the cross section. Right. That's what I'm saying. And then the only yeah. way, the only way we could do any screening at all that would be effective would be to have it right next to the road. And then that doesn't work because you get salt. You just yeah. get salt from Route 3, you kill anything. Mm. So, yeah. So, I mean, it, it, um, you know, just speaking freely, it's an industrial building. You're, right. you're looking at steel and brick. Oh, yeah. And this is more steel and aluminum. Uh, there's, as far as pre preserving the, uh, the feel of the scenery, it's... It's, you, there's a salt. There's a salt building there. That's mafia blocks that stacked up 14 feet. Not, not that pretty. No, <laughs> so, no, and that, um, and that is what catches your eye is that building. I don't. It's sort of like putting lipstick on a the pig. There, I don't. I don't. If I if I plant something so close that I'm screening the whole area, this the salt's just going to wipe those trees out mm -hmm. to get close enough. If I plant a hedge on the east side of the solar array, when the sun comes up in the morning, it's just going to cast a shadow all along those arrays. So I don't. Mm -hmm. I I don't know if you remember, but I um, we did the 500 up in, in Winslow Lane. I went to every every uh, possible person that would see that array. And we planted trees for them. That was in the backdrop of nature. And we wanted them to see trees instead of solar rays if they wanted to. And some did. I don't, I don't have anything to screen here. Mm -hmm. What did the Planning Commission say when they, you made your presentation? Did they have any suggestions? Or? They did not. They, did they express support for it? Or? Yep, they wrote a letter of support. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I, uh, <clears throat> I, the thought comes to my mind is is that the greatest location for them because in the morning at the hill to the east side of route three there blocks the sun you don't you don't get much sun you know and 
Proctor's pretty narrow right in the valley there. You got the hill on the west. Your, your sunlight hours of the day in Proctor are not like they are here in Fitzford. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the, um, uh, well, yeah, I have no objection to it. I'm up on the hill up above it, but it's out of my sight. Yeah. And, and I don't. We're, we're putting some on our sawmill roof on yeah. the roof. No, I heard about that. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, you're, you're not going to get the sunlight on them as many hours a day at that location as you would some other locations. Yeah, no, it's true. But that, it, and that's why you I must know. know what you're doing or you wouldn't be building them there. I'd say, no, so. I understand in the, in the winter when the sun doesn't come up very high, right. not that much production in it. And that's, that's the other reason why we we started and tried to get them as far uh, as far north as possible, get them away from that ridge. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, plus there's two two really big hardwood trees right there along the driveway. But that, you know, I've done a lot of these, and that really only affects it in winter for the most part. And uh, not a lot of production in the winter anyway. Was there any objection from the uh, any of the adjoining landowners? No, no, they, there was there was no objection. Okay. <clears throat> I don't have any objections. No. It doesn't bother me. I mean, we're using an existing power pole, and we're not putting any anything new in. We're not putting any new lines. There's some reason you didn't do this before when you did the original project. Well, that's a very good question. Uh, you know, uh, it came to me in. Um, you know, right at the end of end of uh, October, early November, and so uh, we we'd like to do we'd like to do this 50 kW plant, and I said, well, I I can do that for you, but the whole per permitting process because the one most of the motivation for businesses to put solar on is oftentimes tax credits. So right. if you have a good year, you want to get the system on that year. In order to get the tax credits to use against that tax liability, mm -hmm. so they wanted to get 50 kW on. I said, "Look, it, it takes longer to permit a 50 kW. I can do a 15 kW by right, and then we can go back and amend it later next year." So that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, that's that's why. I guess when you do a motion, you'll want to consider whether you want to simply not object or mm -hmm. you want to authorize a letter to be written. Right. What is everyone thinking? Well, um, yeah, I mean, the Planning Commission already already wrote a letter. Okay. Signed it. I mean, we've, we've, there's already panels there. I mean, with that, so I guess I would say I would make the motion that we write a letter of support for this project. Yeah. I'll second that. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you very hey much. then, yeah, you're welcome. Fantastic. Coming in. We're going to keep Mike here because we talked about the idea of a second alternate on the planning commission. Oh, right. Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. He yep. has written a letter expressing his interest. Would you like to expand on that a little bit? Or? Uh, I, yeah, I'd love to. I, uh, um, I came from uh, the town of Moncton and uh, my uh, father, uh, who's a longtime select board member and and uh, you know, has done a lot of uh, land development up there. I've I've worked with him quite a bit uh, in Moncton, and have some investment properties uh, still up there. And I uh, came to came to Pittsburgh ten years ago, and um, you know, my wife and I have lived here. And uh, uh, interestingly enough, well, one of the first people I met outside of my immediate circle was Mark Winslow, and he was one of the first people to tell me uh, that. Pittsburgh's a great town, and uh, yeah, I've come to really believe that. And uh, and uh, commiserating with uh, Mark, and, uh, and I recently became acquainted with Kevin Blow, and uh, they were telling me about you know the history of, uh, of of Pittsburgh, and you know in terms of its uh, stance on uh, development and politics and all, all these things, and and um, and I. Uh, I felt like uh, if I could be a part of the planning commission, that I would, um, you know, because I've come to, you know, this place is home. I'm very, many generations in Addison County, but this place is home for me now. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about that. I think I'll spend the rest of my days here if I can help it. And uh, 
I'd like to contribute to the town any way I can. I am a solar developer currently. Um, you know, previous to that, you know, I've worked on, you know, through solar development, I worked on a lot of 248 projects. I worked on a couple of 250 projects, um, you know, up in Houston County. And I, my father was an Act 250 review board member appointed by Jim Douglas. Um, and prior to that, I, I uh, worked in insurance and I also worked with Donna Power Corporation and um, I've GC'd some properties, uh, done quite a few subdivisions. So I think, you know, uh, if I can add a helping hand, mm -hmm. I, I will. So uh, I, I'm just looking at the key use of planning commission uh, seems like a good place to start. And if, if I could uh, sit in and, you know, I don't need to vote, but if I could sit in and pay attention and get involved um, with this great town, I, I would like the opportunity to do that. That's great. We don't ever turn away good help. No. <laughs> <laughs> that? We never turn away good help. No. Project like this, does it have a, a time, is it a projected life to something like this, or is it hopefully till the end of time? Yeah, well, it's, um, you know, the CPG that you get from the state, is, there's no time, it's until perpetuity. Um, and it allows you to interconnect and sell the power back to the to GMP. The panels themselves, they have to, the industry standard is that they're warranted to produce 80% uh, of the nameplate power in 25 years. So same, you know, X amount of sun on them, they'll produce 400 watts. 20, let's just say it's 400 watts. 20, 25 years later, same amount of sun, 400 times 0.8, you know, so, uh, but that warranty has to be honored whether it's here or Nevada. Mm -hmm. And what causes panels to break down, you know, it's, uh, that degradation going from 100 to 80, that happens in extreme heat. So up here, like up here in Vermont, I know some fellows that have, you know, 10, 12 acre solar sites and they track this stuff and they don't see any degradation. They're not seeing where each year the output's less and less. So, um, you know, I've seen commercial appraisers appraise these on a 35 year lifetime for the same panels. Hmm. And with the panels, um, once you plug those in and they run and they're on, unless you hit them with a tractor tire, <laughs> no, I'm serious. You hit them with a tractor tire, they'll break. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you can throw a pretty good snowball at them and you won't break. They're, they're tough. But uh, they're tempered glass is what they are. So um, you, know, they, you plug that panel in and it works, that thing will probably work forever. It's completely encapsulated. It's enclosed. It's the inverters. What you're going to have on the side of your building, those are the things to watch out for. Those are finicky. They're really the heart and the brain of the whole thing is those inverters. Now, those things, they, they will typically, you know, you always want to buy the longest warranty you can for the inverter. You always want to do it because you probably need it anywhere from three years in to 12 years in. Those things will probably fail and need to get replaced. But, you know, for five or 600 bucks, you can get a 20 year warranty on where if the thing, you know, goes south on you, you can make a phone call and just get another one in the mail. So people focus on the panels because that's what they see. But it's really those inverters, those little boxes on the side of the building those are the things you got to watch out for. Mm. That, those are that's what's going to break down and need some resetting. You know, you look up for no reason, and you won't be producing any power. When you go over and the inverter's got a red light flashing, you turn it off, turn it back on, and you're good to go. Huh. So, yeah. So, but a very long lifetime, and at any point in time, say thirty-five years later. You could pull those panels off, put some new panels on, and 
keep going. Bear it over. Not bad. You know, the value of those projects are in the permits. To have the ability to interconnect to the grid. Um, you know, it's that map over there. And uh, you look at a GMP map, there's a lot of substations downstream. Well, you say, well, hey, I want solar. And you say, you put in your permit and GMP is going to say, nope, you can't do it. We have too much solar on that substation downstream. We can't let you put solar there. So hmm. a lot of people say, well, I want to do solar, but I'm going to wait. Well, maybe if they wait, they can still put solar up. But on some circuits, on GMP circuits, if they wait, they're going to go ahead and try to do it. And it's already locked up, saturated. So. Sounds like farmers, I guess, it's hard to find a mar market for milk today, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Nobody wants it. No. No, no, it's, <laughs> no. it's all changing. Hard no. to believe. So, <coughs> I can touch base with you after tonight about getting you a letter. Maybe you have a form that you'd like us to use or we can write from scratch. Sure. Well, I, I mean, honestly. Uh, Maybe I'll look at what the Planning Commission. Planning is. Commission. Um, they already, they already wrote one and signed it. <laughs> Maybe you just want to add a signature to it. Yeah. Or a signature block, select board, and yeah. another signature. Mm -hmm. Then it will be yeah. a, you know, then it'll be a group letter of support. Sure. So, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, uh, good. So going back to what we were <laughs> mostly talking about, do we need a motion? Yes, to, to appoint him. Okay. So I'll make a motion to appoint Mr. Norris as an alternate to the Planning Commission. I'll All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Yeah. How's hey. your dad doing, by the way? I haven't seen him for a while. What's that? I said, how's your dad doing? I haven't seen him for quite a while. Oh, yeah. Well, still, you, you know, knowing him the way you do, you know, he's... Uh, still building houses, is he? Still building houses. <laughs> uh, house Building Anonymous is where he needs to go. <laughs> <laughs> he's 76. Oh, and, my God. Well, you wouldn't know it. Yeah. So. You go, for the last... Last 15 years. This will be the last one. This oh, is yeah. the last house. Well, he's been retired the last 10 that I knew him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> retirement to him is more than 40 hours a week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, well, anyway, I won't keep you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Tell him I said hi. Oh, we'll do. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Consider approving the seasonal posting of town highways. Yes. And seasonal is the operative word. Every year as we look toward mud season, we have a uh, motion before the, or an, a resolution before the board to allow for the posting of the listed roads and they're listed here in your packet, um, both, uh, the highway number and the common names. Next motion, we post all the roads. I second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Very good. Here is the resolution. I expect probably Chad will be just like Sean was work with the guys. If, Absolutely. Whenever there's <coughs> uh, cold weather, a situation they, where they have a good cold stretch, they're happy to make exceptions. Right. You know. mm -hmm. Been pretty reasonable in the past. Yeah. Well, don't get caught doing it if they haven't told you you can. No? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, the roads are breaking up a lot yeah, this year. I had to run to Benson today and I was like, holy I know this boy, our crap ceiling, we're going to have to watch that this summer, too. Well, summer by the way, too. I also want to have a conversation with Chad about our parking lot up front. There's yeah. some pretty deep cracks. Some cracks yes, there. And that's a 35-year-old parking lot, presumably, because that's oh. the whole building is. It may be time to pull that it's up. Been, that's yeah. been done once. Yeah. Okay. But it's time to do it again. Yeah. It's definitely showing us. It's showed us age. God, it's all sand out here, too. You'd think yeah, it would be. Yeah. Superior. Um, <coughs> uh, Chairman, um, there are three related things next on your agenda. Yep. Which we can probably deal with all at once if you'd like. Yeah, sure. All right, so we have adopt uh, VTRANS Highway and Bridge Standards, signed Certificate of Compliance for Town Road and Bridge Standards and Network Inventory, and sound ta signed Town Highway Annual Financial Management Plan. These are forms required by VTRANS um, as support for um, town eligibility for the maximum payout of grants. 
structures grants, highway grants. They want to see that you're following the program, you're trying to keep the water off the roads by using best management practices, roadside ditching, et cetera, and that um, you've accepted the state's uh, proposed uh, road and bridge standards. And if you're agreeable to signing off like we've done every year in the past, I can circulate all three of those documents around for signature. Yep. Mm, sounds good to me. I'll make a motion we approve them all. Yo, you need to speak. I know it. Second. second. Well, if you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll second it. Joe's not going to. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Here you go, guys. Becomes the Hooker and Mill show here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Was the state going to have somebody coming around checking up on the towns how they're doing? Probably. Um, they they do actually. Whenever we have these grants, they come out and visit the site. All right. And they make sure that you update your inventory that we've replaced this culvert. All right. We've done this ditch. Yep, they do keep track of it. A lot of data points are following. It's the carrot and the stick, Butch, as you know, and mostly it's, it's the carrots of the grant money. Exactly. It, the grant money, and it, it meets 10% more for the town. So, yeah, so it's, you know, well, it makes, if it helps the roads, it makes sense. Right. You know. 10% is a lot of money. It is yes. in some cases. Yes, it, it is. is. Yeah. Which needs to mute himself again. <laughs> Sounds like a squirrel eating nuts. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to make sure I said the right number when I talked to you. So I, I'm sorry. I, I rustled the paper. Quiet. Tom, I think that's it. You get them all, bro. If not, they'll send them back. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't sign the disapproved line like we did before. Oh boy! That's right. I don't think there is a disapproved line. In no, this. I didn't see one. That was what a liquor license or whatever. Right. Yeah. There, there isn't a lot of space on those. Yeah. No, no. How are you doing tonight, Kelly? You awake? She's, She's nodding. I'm <laughs> <laughs> probably got a nasty email or something. You should. I probably should. You should. Oh, well. All right, review results of town meeting. <laughs> yeah, just a brief recap. Um, all town budgets passed by a roughly three to two margin. Um, I'd like to thank everybody who helped develop the budgets and worked to educate voters and who took part in our informational hearing. Um, and I'd like to, of course, congratulate again uh, Selectman Mills and Hooker for their re-election comfortably. And so um, that's also to be congratulated. And um, the school budget, I should point out, also passed by a vote of about 1,250 to about 950, give or take. What are the numbers again? I don't have the exact number. Oh, that's it's right. About 1250 to about 950. Okay. Like hmm. John, you might say it is pretty near business as usual, and even though the meeting is all messed up. <laughs> I know. I guess that's right. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's always curious to see how many no votes you'll get in a secret ballot. So, you know, maybe that's a message either that people will probably oppose any budget as long as they could do it privately, or maybe there's something about Pittsburgh's budgets that they found upsetting, but level funding was pretty vanilla. I, not too much to object to, I don't think. I haven't heard any complaints. No. no. <coughs> 
All right, appointments to fill elected offices left, well, I think it's office singular, left unfilled by election. Actually, there is none under that category. This next category under appointment of, uh, from boards and commissions um, would include, um, oh, you know, library. Yeah, but we have the town rep to the library board. And so because there was no candidate, there were only write ins, but dominating the field, Madam Chair, was Elizabeth Sulia. Um, and uh, she has expressed a willingness to serve. I would make a motion we appoint her to that position. I second that. <laughs> All in favor <laughs> say aye. I'm still aye. for like a candy or a chocolate bar or right. something. <laughs> Right. Come on! <laughs> we don't get any crap. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Gosh. Hi. 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 Just waiting. Congrats, Liz. Complains <laughs> over lack of graft. I like to see that headline. <laughs> <laughs> right. Involved. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So certificate of highway mileage. Uh, yes, I have that, Madam Chair. That's also something that town typically provides even though we're telling the state that there has been no change in the amount of road miles because we haven't built any new roads if you're agreeable we can have everybody sign that yeah there we go and then the Pitts, pittsburgh village farm oh i'm sorry did you have something oh. No, I thought, you were, I thought you were starting to say something. No. Okay. Um, Pittsburgh Village Farm grant application authorization. Yes. Um, the folks at the Village Farm remind me that um, while they appreciated our, uh, our the board's uh, offer to be supportive of their grant application, they do have a form that the state requires um, showing the legislative body has authorized the town manager to participate now oh, in the okay. process. So that's agreeable. That can be signed as well. I should say, Madam Chair, um, even though we've already approved the appointment of Betsy Morgan in that long list of candidates, there is a separate form that regional ambulance would like to uh, so yeah. I'll circulate that around. Sure. Thank you. Just realized our next meeting's on St. Patty's Day. Oh boy. <laughs> that means John's bringing in cabbage and corned beef for everybody, all right? And green beer. <laughs> or, or a bottle of green beer. There you go. That's okay, too. <laughs> okay. All right. It'll be a fun meeting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because there won't be any dinner down at the church. No. So it's like, yeah. That's a bummer, two years in a row. Yeah. If they're going to have any fairs this year, it's pretty early to talk about it. Oh, uh, well, well, they got to start planning. I mean, within the next month or so. Well, we've penciled in Pittsburgh Day for September 4th. We'll see how that goes. No, fingers crossed. What was it I saw? There was something the other day I'd seen was canceled for the year already. I just remember what in New York that's going to go, but that's still, I saw that one. Yeah. Of course, if we just relocated to Texas, everything would be. We do whatever we want. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's not all bad either. At least it'd be warm. <laughs> all right. I guess so. Last thing is to jump back to old business and consider adoption of amendment of town's burning ordinance. Yeah, at the very end of tonight's packet is just a quick and easy um, amendment, which is in red. Clarifying the periods during which the warden will be authorized to allow a burning in the village. And those periods are from February 1st to 7th, February, May 1st through 10th, and October 10th through 20th. That's uh, in keeping with Brad uh, Keith's suggestion. Mm -hmm. And um, if and when that's approved tonight, then that triggers the town's burden to publish notice that we've adopted this amendment and gives the yeah. voters uh, a couple of months within which they can petition if they don't like it. Right. Okay. Motion, we need I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Yep.
1252 to 960 was the school vote. Oh, thank you. 300 votes. Not too far off, though. Hmm. It was Ben <coughs> Benson that turned down there. Okay. Was it, well, not this year, but historically they had all used to have a house over there. All right, I guess that's it. I'm going to need a motion to adjourn. So move. <coughs> Second. <laughs> all the well, all right. Madam, Chair, Madam, Chair, Madam Chair, Madam Chair. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, may I clarify some information that I may have misspoken on before oh. you adjourn? Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> I was talking to uh, Tom yesterday and we were talking about the leveling that was going to happen on segment two, three, and four that I spoke to at town meeting. Yep. Uh, and I may have spoken to the wrong fiscal year. I may have spoken to fiscal year uh, 23 uh, in my report uh, at the town meeting. And I did miss, misspeak at the Tom yesterday. It is actually... It is actually budgeted and probably and will happen in FY22. So FY22 starts one July, oh. so of the year. So <laughs> no, uh, I think that's what you said, Butch. No, yeah, that, well, I, I, I might have been confused what? when I was talking with Tom yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, yeah. I said, "Hey, come on, that's the whole yeah. year." Yeah, I know. No, I, I know. You, so something was happening in 22. Yeah, and I think this was it, Dave, but I, I just want to clarify. Okay, that. well, yeah. I assumed it was happening in the summer, so anyway. Yeah. So, so now it is. as this summer. It's supposed to go. Hopefully yeah. it yeah. yeah. All righty then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, reiterate my motion to adjourn. <laughs> Never say aye. 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 There, Butch. Good night, Butch. You're done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.